you have a prepaid call from an inmate at the California State Prison, Los Angeles County. This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. To accept this call, say or dial 5 now. Thank you for using. How you doing, bro? Hello? How you doing, bro? Good, man. I'm all right, you, man. Oh, I'm good. So this gentleman has a gang prevention book called Striving to be a Failure. Don't forget to purchase his book on Amazon. So what do you go by? I go by Perry now. What's your nationality? I'm uh, I, I couldn't hear you, bro. Can you hear me? Yeah, what's your nationality? Oh, I'm African American. Are you part of any gang, groups, organization, or used to be in one? Oh, yeah, I used to be a, a, a member of the uh, East Coast Crips, um, African American gang in uh, South Central Los Angeles. What made you join? Well, you know, I, I grew up in a, a household, an environment where gangs and, you know, the gang culture was normalized. You know, I grew up in that uh, environment since birth. Uh, my family were members of the gang, and, you know, growing up in that environment, you know, to me it was like a, a rite of passage. You know, I've seen members of my family and everybody around me, you know, we get older and we join the gang and that, uh, 12 years old, you know, I followed in the footsteps of a lot of the people I've seen around me and joined the gang. What are you convicted of? Uh, I'm uh, convicted of first degree murder. How long is your sentence and how long have you been incarcerated? Uh, I was sentenced to 50 years to life and I have uh, been incarcerated uh, almost 16 years. In July, it will make 16 years. When you first got sentenced, how you feel about it? And when you first went to prison and hit the main line, what was your mentality? Oh, uh, well, when I um, first got sentenced, to be honest, I, I didn't take the sentence uh, serious. I, I thought it was a game. Um, I thought, you know, I was going to go do a couple of years and end up getting out of prison. But 16 years later, I'm still in prison with a life sentence, so uh, that didn't happen. Um, but when I got to prison, you know, my mentality was, you know, continue to, you know, create my gang reputation, continue to make a name for myself. And I, uh, my initial prison was Pelican Bay State Prison. And when I got to Pelican Bay, you know, it was serious business. And I got up there and I continued on my destructive path. Did you ever do a shoe term? Oh, yeah, I did a shoe term. I did um, a few two terms, but the longest one I did was uh, almost two years. I did 18 months in the shoe. And where did you do the shoe term at? Uh, Pelican Bay Shoe. Pelican Bay State Prison. And uh, what was their reason for putting you in the shoe? Uh, for um, several uh, disciplinary fractions, particularly, I was uh, they gave me a program player because I was in the... Uh, this call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. I was in several different uh, racial riots and uh, participated in other, uh, you know, removing people off the yard gang activity. And uh, I was doing the program player and I was sentenced initially to an indeterminate shoe, which means, you know, I go up for evaluation every six months. And uh, yeah, that's how I ended up doing 18 months. So you were done with the calls at one point in time and had to make a name for yourself, so was it worth it in the end? No, it wasn't. It wasn't worth it at all. As I said in this prison, you know, I'm, um, you know, I'm suffering. My, my family is suffering, and the older I get and the more conscious about life I become, I understand that I, I threw my life away for nothing. And that is um, one of the reasons why I wrote this book, because I want our youth to know, you know, when you decide to go out there and join the gang, when it's all said and done, you're going to be riding away in one of these cells or in the grave. You ain't going to hurt nobody. You ain't going to hurt nobody but yourself, your family, your community. And it's all going to be for nothing. 
So to answer that question, it wasn't worth it, not, not even a little bit. I'm suffering every day. You know, I know I'm uh, contributing to my, my mother's health declining because she's stressing over me, over me being in this situation. And, you know, if I would have knew some of the things that I knew to, not know today, joining the game wouldn't even be an option. So you wrote a book, right? Yes, sir. What's the name of your book? Um, the title of my book is Striving to be a Failure, The Reality of Gangs, Jail Cells, and Coffins. Can you tell us what your book is about and who can benefit and learn from your book and why? My book is about the um, harsh reality of gangs. It's uh, unfiltered, raw, you know, straight to the point. This is the lifestyle you're going to choose. And at the end of it, you're not going to get anything positive out of it. You're not going to get no retirement benefits. You're not going to get no 401k. You're not going to get anything productive out of joining the game. You're not going to be the king of anything. You're not going to be the president. You're not really going to be respected by anyone that truly matters. The only people you're going to be respected by is the people that's encouraging you to destroy yourself, your family, and your community. And again, if you're riding away either a casket or in one of these cells crying with a life sentence, you're going to understand that it was all for nothing. And that is the ultimate message in my book, and that is the reason why I wrote the book, because I want all you to know, man, this is not a game, man. I'm sitting here with a life sentence. And unless something, you know, a governor commutes me or a court let me go, you know, I'm stuck here for the rest of my life for something that, you know, I had no meaningful objective. There's nothing positive about it. And look at me right now. I'm, I'm literally rocking away in the field. And, you know, I don't want none of our young people to go through this. And that's why, you know, I'm on the mission I'm on. And this book is, is just the beginning. So what inspired you to write this book? Well, you know, sitting in the cell, you know, and um, it's life going past, you know, I, I turn on my TV, and I see all our young people out there slaughtering each other, and then I, I, I see a young person come to prison, and, you know, it's just, it, it started to eat at me because I know better, and I, I didn't see a, a, enough voices out there like mine that was coming out telling all you, it's like, man, this is not what it is. This is not what you want to sign up for, you know? And I knew that, you know, if I want to, you know, make a difference, um, show, you know, my family, my community, the, the young man whose life I took, his family, that, you know, I, I truly regret what I have done. You know, it is a regret of my life. And me trying to, you know, save our youth, is, 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 is the least I can do, you know, because I can never write what I've done, but because I know better, I feel it is my duty, you know, to go out here and continue to spread my message to the youth that joining the game is the first step to strive to be a failure. And when it all concludes, that lifestyle is going to be either jail cells or coffins. So you can't learn this from a classroom or anything of that nature, right? So with the teachers and, um, um, you know, people of other professions and stuff, tell, tell us why they can't learn it in the classroom and they need, and they need to, uh, you know, get your book as a reference for, um, and, and um, who, who, who has to uh, read your book? Well, you know, you can't... Uh can't teach this in the classroom because you will have to experience this to, to understand the destructive nature. Like, I, I, I will say I've never been a dummy, but even I couldn't see the things that I see now. Like, no teacher can tell you about how you out here gangbanging, calling these dudes your enemies, and then you come to prison and you sell mates with them. You come to prison guys are sitting around the table eating together. And, you know, once you become mature, you think about it like, whoa, whoa. So we were worse enemies on the streets. I'm talking about serious business, killing each other. And we 
coming to prison and he's going to sit around a table and eat. He's going to go out here and play basketball. No, no teacher knows about this. No teacher, you know, can teach this. No teacher can, you know, tell you about how you're standing on the yard and you see somebody that you care about, you know, get stabbed 15, 16 times and you can't do anything. You just got to stand there and look. And, you know, it, it starts to dawn on you like, man, what have I got myself into? And it, it's been a life. This ain't living. And, you know, I don't know no teacher that ever experienced any of that unless they have been in prison. Uh, this call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. Explain him you know, the downfalls of gangs. It's going to have to come from somebody you know who has experienced it. You know, I have experienced it practically from birth. And I know I, there's no better messenger to me than the people like yourself and other guys who have experienced this lifestyle. And uh, I, I call on all of us, you know, to continue. You know, I, I know that there's a lot of stuff that, that, that's trending. You know, when stuff starts trending, people start to follow behind it. I want it to start trending, us coming out and telling our youngsters, join the gangs and you want to destroy your life. No, that's, that's not what it is. And, and most of them that join gangs, we got common sense. We see our family members and cousins and friends dying, going to prison. You know, why would we follow behind them? The examples are all over. And I believe all it's going to take is more people to, like myself to point to it. Like, look, man, that's what you're trying to do, trying to die? Are you trying to go good life in prison? You know, and I believe once that uh, message becomes consistent, we can uh, have dramatic change in our communities. So these youngers out here, like, think it's cool to join gangs and want to chase clout. If they don't end up dead, they're going to end up in prison. So is a, is a guarantee that even if they got a release date or a short term, they're going to get out? Or they can, is that a guarantee? No guarantee in here, man. I, I done seen guys come in here with two or three years and get sent on a mission that they can't turn down. Because if you turn down the mission, we're going to stab you. I kill you, you never walk out of here. We don't care that you only got a few years. Or, you know, you can go to a, it could be a riot, police might shoot you, you know. Um, and um, there's several different ways that you can die or, or catch life. So I don't care if you got a six months, you know, you come to prison within a month, something bad can happen, you know, never walking out of here, like, for instance, you know, recently a lot of guys in here died from uh, COVID-19, you know, and some of those guys were about to get out of prison, and, you know, even though they didn't die violently, they still shoot you. Once you're locked up in this place, there's no uh, guarantee that you're going to even be alive tomorrow to walk out of here, so... Our youngsters need to think about that before they think, oh, you know, I'm going to commit a petty crime, I get a few years, I'll, I'll be back out. There's no guarantee you can get killed on the yard tomorrow. Second day, I, when I got to Pelican Bay, I wasn't there but a, a few months, and I found myself on the yard with my head busted open. Um, I got shot in the head during a riot with a block gun. Um, the doctor told me that, you know, if the block gun would have hit me a little harder, it could have caused serious brain damage or or killed me. This was just within a few months of me being in prison. So, anybody think short time? You have 60 seconds remaining. It is not a game. You know, come to prison, might not walk out of here. That's the bottom line. So far as being chosen for a mission, um, what 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 would make um, an individual being chosen? to go do a mission, like maybe a DP or, 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 or sticking someone or things of that nature? You know, everybody has to, uh, you know, you have to hurry your, your stay in prison, you know. Especially when you're fresh in prison, you know, it's, it's your turn. You don't come to prison and say, oh, I did this on the street, I did that on the street. None of that matters anymore. It's your turn right now. You're going to take this knife and go handle your business or we're going to handle you. And it ain't going to be no if, man, bust, and bust.